And escalation is a mild word in comparison to what eventually unfolds. So now we're going to start to see the chain reactions begin. Um, just a little thing I want to um, bring up. Um, it was brought to my intent, uh, attention that I swear a little too much on the show. So I'm sorry, but I'll try not to do that in the future. You know, it's just that, like, when I'm excited about a movie and I talk to my friends and we're joking about it and we're talking about it and we're excited, I kind of cuss like a sailor. But they do too. So it's, it's just a really bad habit and I apologize. And, you know, I'll try not to do it unless I really have to, you know. So... Okay, so they get to the station, and Rambo's very perspective, you know, taking in his surroundings and what the place is, you know, the pros and cons. Um, officers start joking at him on first sight, but Rambo kind of beats them to it by, like, remarking things like, um, next you're going to tell me, you know, next, sorry, next you're going to ask me if I'm a boy or a girl, or if I'm too poor to afford a haircut and a bath, you know, offering me charity for my shortcomings. So he starts to get, you know, in standby mode at that point. And it's funny because uh, they mention a sign on a scaffold that says uh, blue paint coming to cover the red paint because they painted the place red. And it reminds me of a story Sly was talking about in First Blood when they were painting the set or something like that and I thought that that scenario you know in the book was an interesting coincidence you know the book has small coincidences like similarities compared to the movie and um, that's one of the aspects that make the book such a good read for a Rambo fan so Teasel takes Rambo over to Judge Dobson at the uh, courthouse section of the compound it's a short ceiling room, you know, proudly decorated with its own, like, weapons display. And we can tell that Rambo's getting a little closer to claustrophobia. He starts uh, giving everyone around him the cold shoulder def uh, and, like, a defiant routine. Um, it's also making Teasel paranoid because Rambo's taking his time, um, time that Teasel could be using to solve his marital problems. And so, like, briefly, Teasel's paranoia on the subject of his wife possibly meeting someone else because she's at her sister's in Florida kind of makes him antsy. And we start seeing him, like, you know, try to stay more focused on his job so he doesn't really lose it. And uh, so Rambo goes through processing. It makes it very complicated for them to process him. It's very, uh, it's very difficult to process Rambo. Interrogation expert. Um, there's a cool mind fuck uh, between Rambo and the judge who's joking at Rambo's dispense and they're trying to get intel out of him and the judge asks uh, bleh, sorry asks him about his beard and Rambo says that he can't cut it because he has a rash on his face and Teasel you know accuses Rambo of lying you know right to Dobson he's just like you know Dobson he's a liar blah 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 and uh, Rambo does admit he he does admit he is in fact lying. And you know after that, even Dobson gives him the benefit of the doubt and asks him, "Then why do you have the beard?" And Rambo says, "Because um, I have a rash on my face and I can't shave." So he totally punks Judge Dobson, who in turn tallies up fines and charges. Rambo 35 days in the slammer for vagrancy, resisting arrest, suspicion, accusation of theft, and uh, contempt of court. So Teasel brings Rambo to his cell, a uh, small dark, wet, uh, there's like, it's wet from, um, from Galt, who's um, down there cleaning out vomit and feces from like the drunk tank, and Galt this version of Galt seems to be a fresh on the job rookie type in this version. Like, he's a, he's a lot different. And his co comeuppance actually is a lot different. It's pretty cool. So, Rambo begins tuning out, like, in and out from now and then, like, in flashback perspective. And 
like between the present and uh, Vietnam, like the slimy hole he slept in, you know, day after day, um, the bamboo crates above him, like the the grate covering the hole, them looking down at him, listening to them, listening to their conversations and stuff. Um, he almost gives in to Teasel, who's thinking. Why does this kid want to be down here so bad? Like, he's doing everything to get himself in trouble. So, then we get this bit where Teasel forces Rambo to strip in a really humiliating and violating scene um, involving uh, admiration, like, admiration, like, of his scars. More than Sly's Rambo. Like, this version of Rambo is really, really, really scarred up. This Rambo is um, really a more scarred version of Rambo in comparison, I would say. Um, anyway, um, so he starts searching Rambo almost pretty much naked, forced to showcase his penis and testicles, and then, you know, in one, at one point saying, you know, turn around and bend over, even, even to go as far as, you know, sp spread your cheeks. So, Rambo's described as pretty hairy, and Teasel jokes about it, and he jokes about a prisoner he once held, um, carrying a leather case holding a three-inch knife in its, uh, components up his ass. And, uh, oh no, Armageddon, Rambo's not amused. So, Galt returns, um, with prison garb, and they're looking at Rambo, who's got, like, scars through the hair, kind of cutting off the patches of hair on his body, and uh, Teasel orders him to shower and change before Rambo gets sheared and shaved, but, you know, Rambo's pissed, but eventually goes through with it under the condition that he's not clipped or groomed. So, um, in the shower, Rambo is haunted by his ghosts of war. It's uh, one of my favorite pieces in the book, and it gives us a look at his experience, as well as a little bit of an origin story of his war days. And uh, <laughs> it's just funny. I didn't think I would, you know, have Rambo's Anatomy so descriptive in the uh, in this uh, review. <laughs> um, but it's okay, you know. I guess it goes out to all you lady listeners in the audience you know don't feel bad don't be ashamed you can imagine it's sly you know you know i was imagining it was sly you know we saw him already on display in party at kitty and studs so or the italian stallion if you want to put it as that title but you know who cares anyway so uh yeah rambo's in the shower having reliving flashbacks and we get this awesome, awesome, um, awesome montage. <laughs> um, Rambo junk. <laughs> um, so in the montage, um, shows his existence in the uh, internment camps and the tiny hole he was uh, living in. You know, working off chores for the VC, every day being starved. Uh, just enough to stay alive, then forced to work, you know, after that. And over time, even more. And at one point, my favorite, my favorite part in the uh, book, actually, is they throw down a live snake into his pit, and he twists the head off and eats it raw, because he's so hungry. He pukes up most of it, but he keeps some down, and uh, he doesn't even think about if it was venomous until, like, a couple of days later, because um, time is distorted, and his conscience is fragmented. Kind of. And we get the numerous torture and interrogation bits. And the uh, crucifixion scenes, which are freaking awesome. Um, he picks uh, upon where the Baker team is locating itself and what uh, U.S. mission uh, statuses are. And um, they don't say Baker team, but, you know, we can we could just fill in that. Um we learn he was captured because he took a shot to the leg 
uh, shredding his thigh muscles. Um, we get flashback to his training days at Bragg. They don't say Bragg, but I assume it's Bragg. Um, the 15 mile run every morning, like daily. Um, not breaking his rank to be sick, even though repeatedly he's like throwing up while he's running but not breaking rank because it comes under um, terms of punishment if he does and they make him do like thousands of push-ups and you know at the drop of a dime no matter where he is if he's in like the food court or he's sleeping or using the bathroom on the toilet so we see his training you know with like harnesses drop training included uh, we can see Uncle Sam you know form him unbreakable even though uh, he's not mentioned just yet, we feel his um, approaching presence. So he's like expert in weapons, explosives, um, demolition, interrogation, um, having to hunt a field of cow cows um, with his uh, peers, you know, just with knives. Like they all come out with knives and they go after the cows. Um, like carving them out, camouflaging himself inside the bodies, and they're all like screaming, and like all the animals are like screaming, and he's like crawling around inside them and stuff, washing himself in blood, um, you know, doing day jumps into forests, night jumps into swamps to live there for a week uh, with his only protection, a knife. Um, I may be wrong, it's been a while since I, you know, first time I read it, but, um, Sorry guys, but I believe this is the only cameo of the uh, trademark Aviator Rambo knife. It's brief, but it's in there, like gadgetized with all the uh, fixings, I wonder. Um, he earns his Green Beret, and uh, he gives himself dysentery, um, charting out a plan of escape, you know, eating rotten food, bugs slime excrement where he is mired his own and others he he eats that too um he goes delirious and uses this culmination to escape while out doing chores carrying trees for the enemy guard so he escapes and tries to find um a mountain tribe constantly in and out of consciousness um paranoid thinking um Sorry, paranoid thinking that um, the enemy are everywhere. Even, you know, even as far as, like, falling upon the tribes and they care for him. And he runs away escaping thinking they're the enemy, too. Um, surprisingly, awaking in, a, in tops of trees, camouflaged. And, um, you know, he finds he has bits of food on him from um, villagers, etc., but he's always like in and out of it. So he protects himself from like jungle predators, etc. And uh, he's so gone that he doesn't even realize that once he's found on US soil that he's been there on US soil for days. Or the US compound of, of uh, where, where the unit, where his unit is. So he's run, running from his own side and he cannot at this point tell dreams from reality. And he's almost dead, cramped and, and pretty much faded. Um, He's used the sun rise and sunsets along with the stars to as a bearing like um <clears throat> bearing point compass and all the time I knowing that he was um like what was really happening to him, you know, and what he was living or dreaming on his way uh to his destination, living days of like rain upon rain upon rain, um, at a time. Almost barely sucked down into the earth roots and mud so yeah so um an american finds them and almost mistakes them for the enemy and all rambo can do in response is hysteric laughter he's in the hospital for about a month or he's been we find out he's been gone for six months but from his drop point to his destination he's only he's he's covered a, a total of 390 miles. So this is where it gets crazy.